Aloe vera has been a staple ingredient I've used in my hair care regimen for about five years now and it hasn't failed to grow my curls into a healthier state yet. Today, I'll show you how to add aloe vera into your wash day routine using a fresh aloe vera mask. Plus, I'll be sharing some aloe-based hair products so that your hair can benefit from aloe in more ways than one. First, peel the spine of the aloe and chop it into smaller pieces. Instead of leaving uncut aloe in the fridge, I'd suggest cutting up the entire thing, getting all the gel off the leaves, and then freezing what you don't need to use that day. The next time you want to do the treatment, you could simply just defrost what you need instead of doing the entire cleaning process from beginning to end. After cutting the aloe, you'll see yellow liquid seeping out of it. This is the latex that can cause skin irritation. If you have sensitive skin like me, using the aloe plant without draining the latex first can cause a lot of itching and burning so this is why it is a great idea to fully drain the latex before using it once you chop it into smaller pieces soak it in water anywhere from 30 minutes to overnight you'll know the latex is properly removed by how murky the water looks after soaking it for a while after 30 minutes wipe the aloe to make sure there is no yellow latex left if there is re-soak it for longer until it's properly removed to extract the gel, peel the flat side of the aloe leaf off and scrape the fleshy part of the aloe with a clean fine tooth comb. This is one of the best ways to get a very thick gel that easily glides through tangles and knots. The thicker the gel, the easier and less messy it is to work with. Alternatively, you can blend it, but it will be more like a thin aloe water in comparison. After shredding the aloe with a comb, strain it to get rid of the pulp. For any of my curly haired loves, you know how frustrating it could be to get through your entire wash routine only to find several chunks of whatever DIY treatment you used still stuck in your hair at the end of it. If your gel is smooth going in your hair, it will be smooth coming out. Like I mentioned earlier, you can blend the aloe, but it will leave you with aloe water versus a thick gel. As you could see in the side-by-side -side comparison, I found that the thicker the gel is, the more helpful it is for managing my curls than blended aloe water. My curls are 10 days old, super dry and extremely tangled. So I'm going to use the aloe to help melt through them by applying it to the ends and working my way up. If your hair is super tangled like mine was, it's no big deal. Just divide your hair up into smaller sections to make it more manageable. I always put my aloe in an applicator bottle before using it because it creates less of a mess and it makes it a lot easier to apply directly to my scalp. When you're using the aloe, fully saturate your hair until it feels like slimy seaweed. That's how you know you have enough to safely detangle your hair without any breakage. I'm going to keep applying aloe until I see that it is fully soaked through and a little detangling tip, I'm gently pulling any loose shed hairs that might want to come out as I'm wetting my hair with the aloe before going in with any detangling tools. Once you apply the aloe, take time to massage it into your scalp. Massaging it helps to increase blood circulation, which is majorly responsible for growing hair. And you can go in with an electric scalp massager like I have to boost your hair growth gains. It's more effective than using just your fingers. It also helps your scalp to fully absorb the aloe. After each section is detangled and massaged, seal with an oil. This is gonna lock in the moisture, making it more effective at reducing hair breakage and thinning. And the one I'm using is a DIY herbal hair oil to boost hair growth. Feel free to use any oil that your hair likes or loves. I'll be coming out with a tutorial for this soon, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. 
Now, all that's left to do is to repeat the same steps to the rest of the sections. Number one, apply aloe until it's slimy like seaweed. Number two, massage your scalp to encourage blood circulation. Number three, detangle from ends all the way to your roots. And four, apply a hair oil to lock in the moisture. Aloe is effective at maintaining scalp health for a few reasons. It contains saponins. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the white stuff that's foaming up in my hair as I braid it down, those are the saponins in action. It's a natural cleaning agent that can remove grease, dirt, and grime from the hair and scalp. Aloe also contains salicylic acid and sulfur. Salicylic acid is a beta alpha hydroxy acid that is effective at exfoliating and removing dead skin cells from the scalp. Sulfur does the same thing and it's effective at soothing sensitive skin. Using fresh aloe on your hair unclogs hair follicles, allowing it to grow out quicker and healthier. As you can see, the aloe turned my dry hair into silky curls. It made it extremely easy for me to detangle my super knotted up hair. The curls are bouncing back to life. It always makes my wash day routine so much easier, especially by the time I get to the shower. The reason I'm braiding my hair up is so that I can easily wrap them around my head, bobby pin it in place, and surround wrap my hair instead of using a regular plastic cap. This is one of the best ways to help aloe penetrate deeper inside of the hair shaft. And for an added bonus, I apply heat for around 30 minutes to an hour. It allows me to use this treatment as a mask and a hot oil treatment, kind of like all in one. So killing two birds with one stone, you feel me? After using this specific aloe treatment, I always shampoo with a gentle clarifying shampoo. Because I use oil in my hair, I make sure it's properly removed so that my curls aren't weighed down when it comes to styling them later. I gently massage the shampoo into my scalp all the way down the shaft, avoiding the ends. The Come Clean shampoo is perfect for deep cleaning hair without stripping it of moisture. The ingredients are extremely clean and it removes hard water buildup, which causes breakage. On top of that, it's pH balanced to maintain healthy skin on the scalp. Because my shower water is pretty hard, I wring out the water and then spray my curls down with some pure aloe water. Aloe water helps to close the cuticle and smooth frizz. The one I'm using is distilled aloe that doesn't need to be refrigerated, so it's extremely convenient to use. If your curls tend to dry out quickly, I highly recommend going in with a leave-in conditioner while you are still in the shower. I'm using my DIY curl serum as my leave-in conditioner and to prep my curls for styling. Layering my products from lightest to heaviest, my last step is my holy grail hair cream, the Camille Rose Aloe Butter. The very first ingredient in this hair cream is, you guessed it, aloe gel. <laughs> I love when the front label is an honest reflection of the first five ingredients in the product. As usual, I'm combing everything through so my hair is evenly covered, focusing on my driest parts, which are my ends and the very front part of my hair. The shine from this combination of products is pretty incredible. It always gives me consistent results every single time. To ensure my curls don't dry out until I finish styling, I usually pop on a plastic cap and wrap it with a towel. Doing a wet plop like this keeps my curls detangled and deeply moisturized. To complete styling my hair, I'm gonna be using two products. Another holy grail product, which is my DIY flaxseed gel. This creates a protective cast around my curls so that they dry with maximum curl definition. Working in small sections, applying flaxseed gel near the root, not on the root, but near the root to the ends. The amount needed for every head of curls is gonna be different because of porosity pattern and length. But regardless of your hair type though, always apply enough product until every strand is covered. Thank you. 
Another way I like to sneak in aloe is by styling my edges with it. The one I'm using is a natural store-bought gel that's typically used to heal sunburn. So you could just get aloe gel you can find it just as long as it's like 96 to 98 percent aloe. Most edge controls cause my skin to break out along my hairline and this is why I prefer using aloe gel. It's good for your skin and your hair. I will say though the hold with aloe gel is not as strong as regular edge control but for my hair in particular it holds it neatly in place all day. I don't know why I decided to finger roll my curls out of the blue. I definitely regretted doing it because those curls came out shaped really weird when it dried. I much prefer to use the rake and shake technique by Weedad which I demonstrated earlier. I did most of my head with that technique but you could use a demon brush to define your curls if that's more your vibe as well. This is what my curls looked like fully dry. They felt soft, fluffy, and had movement. If you do decide to try this routine, monitor how your hair is responding to the aloe because it's definitely not a one size fits all for everyone. Subscribe, like, and share this video for more content like this from me. And as always, I'm sending you all the love, light, and good vibes, and I'll see you in the next one. I roll my curls long several times while straightening and coloring my hair all at the same time. Today, I thought I'd share all the things that I've learned along my journey to grow my curls thicker and longer, despite not following the curly girl method. Depending on how thick your curls are, rewetting and combing through your hair several times a week can potentially lead to moisture overload. If you're rewetting it and brushing it and doing all these things that could lead to breakage and tension in your hair, that's why, girl, it grows out of the scalp, but it's too weak to stay. 